So today we're going to talk all about quail. A lot of you have been asking me about our quail. I know you have followed our journey from <laughs> our loving quail to then hating quail and then loving quail again. So where are we at now? We're at loving quail. We still really, we're really liking our quail. We had a really hard start with our quail, as you saw in other videos and some blog posts. Um, and I like to refer to them as our feathered ninjas because that's what they are. They are very uh, flighty <laughs> and they love to jump up and just fly around. Um, and that's just instinctual for them. So today I'm going to go over uh, a few questions and answers that you guys have been asking. It's just easier for me to kind of compile it all into a video. And But first I'm going to go over some things with you. I do have a note sheet that I wrote because otherwise we'd be all over the place with this video and I want to try to keep it short so that your attention span is you know still here when we're done so today we're going to go over housing feed uh, what to use quail for eggs and meat most likely um, hatching and then we're going to also go over the different quail breeds breeding um, we're going to go over your questions and answers like how to sex them when to add new chicks favorite recipe things like that so all right I'm gonna get started on housing and I'm gonna show you a quick clip so here's one of our quail habitats this is a really old rabbit hutch that we built I do have a tarp over it to give them some privacy um, and that's just so they can kind of go back there when they feel threatened or when it's raining um, this is a really solid hutch it does open here in the front so it's easy access. I do have wire up at the top and in every single hole possible because we did have a weasel issue. Hello. They're not used to the phone, so. And here's what it looks like on the inside. <clears throat> now I did just get started on cleaning everything out this weekend. So um, I haven't put the branches back in. That's the only thing I haven't put back in yet. Normally back there, I'll put some pine branches or, um, you know, something that they can run on under and pick at. I do have a food bowl here, ouch, um, that they get their feet in. And we'll need more soon. And then we have a dust bathing area. They love to dust bathe, just like chickens. And then we have their water. Now we do use wire bottoms, and as you can see, it's a good thing because all of the feces drops to the bottom underneath of the hutch. <clears throat> um, we use this really little hardware cloth wire, and it does really well for their feet, doesn't bother their feet or anything. They do really well. Now we did just integrate a couple of our chicks that we hatched. So you see our male back there, he's kind of trying to hover over top of them. As my son calls it, he's trying to put babies at them. And that's really the basics of our quail hutch. We do have um, another little hutch. You see her peeking. <laughs> Another little hutch that we put chicks in. Ah, you hear my quail. That's the sound they make. But otherwise, that's it's really simple setup. As long as they are safe. Hello. As long as they're safe and have uh, you know a good place to run, should they get scared, they'll be fine. This is an unused hutch. That's why it looks so shady. This is what the chicks came out of. Um, we had them in the outdoor brooder, transferred them to the little hutch, the chicks. And in here I do have a board so that they can get used to the wire. Whenever you're putting chicks on wire that you've never had on wire before, um, it is a good idea to give them something firm to stand on so they can get used to it. Otherwise they almost get kind of like dizzy looking. So then they transferred to this hutch and then they transferred to the big hutch. 
just like old blue here. Okay, so as you can see, we use hutches for our quail. Uh, now this is optional. We prefer the large hutches. As I've said before, we give all of our animals more room than suggested. So even our chickens have a huge coop um, and we only have 12 chickens in that coop. So for our quail, we're giving them a huge hutch, which is more space than suggested. Um, so I'm not even gonna tell you how much they need. Um, I believe that I have right now, I could fit six quail in the large hutch that I have. And I feel like that's enough quail in that large hutch. Now you'll see other people have smaller uh, cages and that's fine if that's wor what works for them, but that's just not what works for us. We like to give our animals enough space to run around, to have their own space so that they're not fighting. Um, if one gets sick, you know, they're not hovered right on top of each other. So we do like to give space. Um, I wish I would have gone ahead and, and put the branches back in. We have lots of pine trees around here, so we'll add pine branches in there for them to, to sleep under. Um, and then I also forgot to mention in the video, I have a bowl. It's about this big and I'll stuff straw in that and in the bowl it's not a nesting box it's actually a bowl and the quail hens will go in and they'll lay their eggs in that so um, that's another fun option for them you know we don't have the capability to right now put them on the ground um, right when I was going to build a run for them to be on the ground we had a big rainstorm and all of that got washed out and you'll hear me constantly talk about how we live on a steep hill we do, okay? Unless you've been here, you don't understand how steep our hill is. And our entire property is steep and everything runs off. Every time somebody comes here to pick up animals that were slain to them, they say, oh my gosh, you really do live on the side of a mountain, basically. And it's true, so it causes some challenges for us here, but we work around it as much as possible. So, I'm gonna give you the other housing options. Um, if you're not doing the hutches with the wire flooring, uh, whether it be a wooden hutch or whether it be a all wire hutch that you buy your other option is to have them on the ground now keep in mind quail do fly up very high so whatever you have you'll need to have a roof on top of it or some kind of bird netting uh, so that things can't get in and they can't get out um, we have found that predators like quail uh, we have a weasel and he can get in anywhere that's why you call him a weasel uh, and he got some of our first batch of quail that we had. And it was a bummer because I was so like ready to give up. But we fixed that issue and we haven't had that issue since. So um, we're doing really good there. So hutch on the ground um, with like a, a, like a mini coop, you know, like a chicken coop. Uh, quail nest and sleep on the ground. They do not roost like chickens do. So making sure that they have like a low to the ground area that they can go in is perfect whether it's in a large run or or whatnot can you free range quail um, no <laughs> you can in the sense that if you were to get like electric netting um, you could possibly do that but number one they could probably still fly over it and number two they just they're just not like chickens they're not like a free range kind of bird um, they're very wild. They're still very wild birds. So you're going to lose them. We had one, we let one male out, extra male out that we had. And, um, yeah, he was gone in like 30 minutes. He just flew away. He was completely gone, which was fine. We were, <laughs> we were going to use him as training quail anyhow, uh, for our dog. But, um, he found a new home, I guess, in the woods or in somebody's belly. Okay. The last option for housing is housing quail inside, which I'm not a big fan of because listen, quail, they're stinky. Um, they have a lot of ammonia in their feces. So um, if you are going to house them inside, it could be like a warehouse or a barn. Um, that's a great option. Uh, but you know, a lot of people keep quail as pets too. Um, my dad has constantly told me in the past few months that his mom actually kept quail inside as pets and of course she would um, clean it out every single day so it didn't stink but that's an option too. Uh, you do need to keep track in the housing of your male to hen ratio. 
just as with chickens, you know, you need at least six hens to one rooster with chickens. It's kind of the same, kind of the same concept with quail as well. You need at least three to four quail to one uh, male quail. So three to four hens to one male. Um, or else they, the males will fight. They will fight. So just make sure you keep an eye on that, depending on how many you have and which is which. Okay, so the next uh, thing for quail is feed. Now, um, someone asked me, let's see, ch kitchen, kitchen scraps. Do quail eat kitchen scraps as good as chickens do? I would answer that as no, because a lot of my kitchen scraps, why is it so hard for me to say kitchen scraps? <laughs> um, it's like apple peels and fruit and number one it takes quail a lot longer to eat those big things they're so small and their beaks are so small that it's just kind of a challenge for them to eat those things now if it's stuff like leftover oatmeal or crumbled up hamburger or something like that then yeah they do easier with that but chicken chicken straps I keep wanting to say chicken straps kitchen scraps in general it just depends on what it is. We do give them grapes, we give them blueberries, strawberries, fruits like that. Um, takes them longer to eat it, but they do eat it. So the bulk of their food uh, is either like grass clippings, um, because they're in hutches we have to give them grass clippings, um, or if they're on the ground they wild forage very well. Uh, if you have a movable run, that's a great option. Otherwise we give them crumbles, um, and it's called wild game bird uh, crumbles and you can get that at any feed store any farm store um, and just make sure you get the crumbles because they can't really digest the pellets very well because they're so little um, it has a great amount of protein in it um, and and they really enjoy it they've grown really well off of it um, someone had mentioned that they make their own um, quail feed but I just don't I, I'm not sure about that I've never done that before so I don't know how it would turn out but I'm sure you could find it online if you wanted the recipe. Uh, water is also very important. I have learned that quail drink a lot of water and they don't necessarily drink it all at one time. Like I feel like chickens will kind of go and they'll drink a lot of water at once and then they'll go for hours at a time. But quail kind of drink it gradually throughout the day. Um, so make sure they have water on hand at all times. Eggs and meat, that is what we use quail for. Uh, I'm not really quite sure what else you would use them for. Uh, we got quail on our homestead because we wanted to have a easy, sustainable meat source. Um, and the eggs have incredible health benefits. Quail eggs have so many extra vitamins and goodness in them that chicken eggs don't have. The other awesome thing about quail eggs is that they don't carry salmonella. Could they carry it? Potentially, I believe they probably could. But more likely than not, they do not carry salmonella. So that's a really good option too. Um, not only did we get quail for meat and eggs for us, but we got quail uh, for meat and eggs for our dogs. Our dogs really enjoy quail eggs, um, and any leftover quail meat that we'll have will go to them as raw food. Because our dogs, we do an alternating schedule of raw food and dry food. Um, so they would really benefit from quail on our homestead as well. Now, the, the basics of quail, let's talk about their lifespan and all of that. So quail don't live very long. <laughs> uh, a quail's lifespan is only about two to three years. Uh, after the one year mark, they really kind of start dropping down in production. Though, like with chickens, I'm sure you could have quail that um, lay up to the three year mark. But they really start kind of dropping off. Now, most quail will lay an egg a day um, from about March through September. Um, they do lay by daylight, so they need at least 14 hours of daylight. Um, I believe we will probably add some supplemental lighting to our quail this year. Um, and that's because they, they really are kind of a lighting 
a lighting bird. The, I, the quail I got didn't start laying until they were 14 weeks old, and that's because we got them in early spring, and they, um, something's dropping on me, and they just simply didn't lay because they didn't have enough sunlight. Um, you don't need to do a whole light bulb in there. You could do a strand of Christmas lights and turn them on early in the morning and then turn them off late in the evening. So it's not intrusive, but it does give them that extra little amount of light. Um, quail leg lay about one egg a day, um, but sometimes if you catch it right, they can lay two eggs a day. I do have one hen who lays two eggs a day. She'll lay one egg really early in the morning and when one leg one egg really late in the evening. Now the growth spurt for quail, normally it takes between five and eight weeks before butcher, um, which is really quick when you think about it because if you're doing, um, you know, chickens, they are, unless you get the franken chicken, you know, they take a lot longer. Uh, the franken chicken only takes eight weeks, of course, eight to ten weeks, I think is suggested. Quail is between five and eight weeks, depending on how much nutrition they've gotten from you and um, their housing situation. But I've known a lot of people who, who butcher at five weeks. Quail can also start laying eggs between six and eight weeks as well. So for me, that was kind of a no-brainer. We had, you know, rather than waiting six months for chickens to lay eggs, I only had to wait six weeks to get quail eggs. Uh, and to butcher them at should we want them for meat. So we we actually haven't butchered a, a set of quail yet. Uh, that's coming up with the next batch I have in the incubator. Uh, I plan to show that whole process if at all possible. Um, but it's very it's very simple, very quick. Um, and to me, with quail for meat and eggs, you're not putting as much time and effort into it as you are with chickens. Um, now with quail, quail normally only weigh three and a half to five ounces, the Caternix quail, which is what we have. Um, you can get jumbo quail, which can go up to a pound. Uh, now this is uh, not processed, this is live weight. Um, but you know, jumbo quail are basically like the Japanese colored quail, but just bigger. So that's, that's the next thing I want to go over. Um, is the types of quail. Now we have the Faro Craternix quail, which are the Japanese colored, the brown ones that you saw, and we also have one A&M quail hen. Um, she, she is really spunky. Okay, she's a little bit bigger than the, the Japanese quail. Um, so here's the colors. I'm going to read it off this list so I can kind of go down with you. Uh, all of these are Craternix. Uh, uh, they're just different colors, just like you know, chickens kind of. So there's the Faro, which is a wild color, which is what we have, the brown color. There's the Jumbo Brown, which is also like the Faro color, it's just bigger. Uh, English White, A&M, uh, and the A&M were produced by Texas A&M College. They are produced to be all white meat uh, and a little bit thicker. Um, so they're really interesting. I wish I had more of those, but such is life. They are is also Golden, Tibetan, I think, Tibetan, Tuxedo, Silver, Cinnamon, Redhead, Black, Fawn. Okay, so there's a lot of different colors that you could get. You can mix and match those colors to get hybrid colors, or um, like with us, we mix and match the A&M <clears throat> with our Japanese, and we got Japanese. Um, and that's because the A&M color, normally white colors are not dominant, they're recessive. All the quail we have are c considered Caternix quail. Um, they just have different colors. Uh, now, you can get into other quail like um, the Bob White quail and things like that, but there are certain quail, uh, certain quail in certain states you have to actually have a license for. So that's the only reason we didn't get into any of those yet, just because I don't want to have to go through and figure out if I need a license or not. So let's talk about breeding and hatching, and then I'll get to your questions and answers. Um, breeding months, as I stated, are normally between March and September. That's because we're, we start having longer days through those months. Um, hatching only takes 18 days, between 17 and 18 days. Um, all of the quail that I have hatched have been really, really well at hatching. I feel like quail are a lot more resilient than things like chicken and duck eggs. They seem to just do really well with hatching. 
Um, so it's a short, everything is short with these quail because they're so little. So there's a short hatching, there's a short breeding, there's a short um, time span between hatch and adulthood and laying and eating. And so that's the number one reason we got quail as well. Um, once hatched, they do need heat, a heat source just like chickens do. Now, I do have my outdoor breeder, um, brooder, not breeder, uh, and in the summertime, they haven't needed any heat source, um, but that's only because we haven't gotten down below, you know, 80 most evenings. Now, at the end of August, we're starting to get down to the 60s on evenings, which means they would need a heat lamp, but we don't have any babies right now. The next batch of babies will go out into the outdoor brooder with a heat lamp. So I think I've basically covered the basics to quail. They're really not that complicated, to be honest with you. The, the basics are, you know, their housing is simple, whether it's a hutch or on the ground or in a removable electric netting. Um, they, they do nest on the ground. Uh, they, don't, they don't roost like chickens. They lay one to two eggs a day, depending on their size. Um, they breed from March through September. And, you know, that's general you're going to get eggs before that and after that probably but their their main breeding time is during that time the only downfall to quail is they only live between two to three years and their laying age normally starts slowing down after the year to year and a half mark so you're going to be replenishing your quail stock every year and a half about which is great because it only takes five weeks for them to to grow up and start laying eggs <laughs> So now let's go over your questions and I will give you some answers if I can. Um, one of the first questions was how to sex them. Um, I feel like that's kind of a video all on its own, but it depends on the color that you have. Some colors are colored by sex or, or sexed by color, sorry. Um, so like the, the brown Japanese colors, uh, a lot of times you can sex them because um, the females will have dark spots on their chest and even into the third and fourth week and the, and the males will have a flat color on their chest. Now that's not always a proven way to sex them either. Uh, like I said, different colors have different sexing options. Your more guaranteed way is to really wait five weeks and see who starts laying and who doesn't start laying. Between five and eight weeks, depends on your lighting situation. The other option is to vent sex, just like you would with chickens. Um, for me, though, I feel like quail are a little bit easier to vent sex. Uh, with quail, um, on, a, on a hen chick, uh, she will have the opening hole, just like chicken, chickens do. Um, on the males, normally they won't, and you can do the foam test with them, where you can squeeze the genital part and foam will come out. So that's your surefire way to kind of sex them as well. This is the foam that males excrete. If you start seeing this around your hut or whatever kind of housing you have, then you'd absolutely have at least one male in your batch. Uh, it, at first it looks like white feces, but it's actually really foamy. Um, and so that's what males excrete from their behinds. Uh, and that's what you'll see. The next question was when to add new chicks. We did not add our last batch of chicks until they were about four and a half weeks old. Once they were fully feathered, that's when I went ahead and integrated them. Now their hutch is directly beside the adult hutch, and so they were kind of getting used to each other already. I did go ahead and throw them in there. Not literally, but I put them in there. And, um, and there he is. I was wondering when he'd show up. And they integrated very well, so I was really pleased with how well they integrated. It wasn't like chickens. Um, so I would say between four and a half weeks, five weeks. I answered the kitchen scrap question. Yes, they can have kitchen scraps, but they don't eat them as well as chickens do. The next question is how to keep them warm in the winter time. How to keep them warm in the winter time. That's just like any other animal here on our homestead. Look at the sun on my face. Sorry. Um, we pack their hutches full of straw. Um, that's really your surefire way with any of any animal in a hutch is to pack their hutch full of straw and to wrap plastic around the outside of their hutch, leaving one section without plastic unless it's a really, really cold climate that you live in. Behemoth, quiet. 
So straw and plastic is really the best way to do that. Um, just like with chickens, they don't need a source of heat. Um, as long as they have straw and they have natural uh, things in their environment to keep them warm, um, you can put like a little housing unit in there that they can run under and keep warm under there in the winter time, which is also what we will do this winter. Um, so it's, it's fairly simple. The last question that I'm going to answer today, since Behemoth is being rude, is what is your favorite recipe? And I've got to tell you, my favorite is just pan roasting it. Um, if you keep the skin on, it's delicious. If you don't keep the skin on your quail, and see that's something we'll need to go over to, um, is how do you how do you process your quail? You can process it by either skinning it and not defeathering it, or you can process it by leaving the skin on and defeathering it. If you leave the skin on, you can pan fry it, pan roast it, not fry it. Um, it and it's very quick, just olive oil, some thyme, um, salt, pepper, and you just lay it skin side down for probably about five minutes or so, and then, if that, and then flip it over for another couple of minutes and it's done. It's really that simple. And normally I like to, to pair it with roasted potatoes, also with thyme. And then you can do some other things like asparagus and a nice harvest table with your quail. Um, so that's, that's my favorite way to enjoy it. You can use quail just like you would any other poultry. Um, they're just smaller and more compact and they can dry out really quickly. So that's the only thing you have to watch for with that. Uh, the more I start processing these, the more videos I'm gonna do on the cooking of quail and enjoying it and um, getting the best flavor out for you. So those are the basics. I hope I covered the basics. Quail are really simple, they're really easy. Um, you know, we were having a struggle with them because we had a predator and in the beginning we didn't know what we had with them. I had more males than I realized um, because they weren't sexed properly when I got them. Of nobody's fault. Um, but I had more males than I thought I did. And the males were fighting and the males will fight um, if they don't have enough hens. So, so we were able to figure that out and uh, remedy that and so now we're really enjoying our quail. So anyhow guys, if you have more questions please leave them. I'm sure I didn't answer all of them, but I will try to do another one if you have enough questions. Otherwise, I'll just answer them as you type them out. Um, hope that helped. Have a great day and happy homesteading. Mm -hmm.